guess this is going to be kind of a weird one. Um, I've got an odd admission to make. This admission is basically my most popular series on this channel, the one that keeps blowing up despite me doing all kinds of new stuff, despite them being years old, for some reason, for some unknown, very strange algorithmic reason, YouTube keeps pushing my reverse reverse engineering series. And don't get me wrong, I love that series. I really am continuing this channel so that I can get back to that series and other similar stuff. But it's like the worst produced content I've ever created. And I've created some really bad content. It's like there's some weird zooming, there's like an odd like black border around everything because I forgot to resize all of my cameras. It's like the audio is crap. And most importantly and most embarrassingly, the code is horrible. I tried to go back to it recently, honestly, and I looked back at the code and couldn't understand any of it because I didn't actually learn Windows programming. I just completely like script kitted it out and just kind of like, I don't know, just like copy and paste it from MSDN and it's just, it's a bad series. I'm not going to ask you to not watch it because obviously I benefit from you watching it, but this is going to be part of the same series, but I'm kind of revamping it. I'm stopping all of the script kitty nonsense. I'm actually going to learn how to produce videos, but most importantly, I'm going to go back and reteach myself C, C++ because it's been a while since I've written it, frankly. And it had been a long, long time um, since I had written it when I tried to do, the, to do the series before. My thought process was I'm going to learn malware development at the same time as learning C, C++. I ended up just trying to learn malware development and didn't actually learn anything about C, C++. So I'm going back and I'm restarting it. Here's how I'm going to do it. I am actually writing code. Um, I've got a code editor open. It is the worst code editor that I've used since like my Java days. Um, I believe that one was called Eclipse. Horrible IDE, absolutely hated it. But I'm restarting using the C, C++ for Dummies book. I will link to it in description. Obviously it's going to be an affiliate link because cash money. Um, but like the, the whole purpose is to go back and actually teach myself the language, to understand it from a foundational level. And some of that like foundational level relearning is like, I don't know, it's, it's going too far back. Like I understand how to create variables. I've been coding for 10 years. Most of it's been in Python, a lot of JavaScript recently, but I, I understand variables. But the whole purpose of it is to go overboard and actually teaching myself the fundamentals and through this series, hopefully teaching you the fundamentals while also eventually ending up back at the malware, like reverse reverse engineering idea, the, the idea of building malware, um, you know, using C, C++. So this episode is going to kind of cover the first half of the C++ for Dummies book. Um, I just started getting into a lot of the object oriented programming and stuff like that. So I figured I was at a really good stopping point to kind of explain the fundamentals of like uh, pointers and how C, C++ works. So that's going to be what this is. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it uh, just because that's not really what this is all about. This is not for people who don't know how to code. This is for people who know how to code and want to learn C, C++ with it. Um, there are plenty of tutorials on like brand new programmers learning C, C++, like this is, th that that is what you want to look for if you don't know how to code already. But this is me as a programmer who already knows how to code in Python, already knows how to code in JavaScript, already knows how to code a little bit in C, C++ before this. Um, this is me teaching myself specific C, C++ stuff. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so I've got the code open already. Um, I didn't want to bore you by like coding it live. Um, so I'm just going to kind of explain it line by line. Um, and there's a reason why I wrote this specific code. It's supposed to kind of um, point out different features of C, C++ and different um, specifically like pointer features within the language um, to kind of illustrate the things that I learned from the first half of uh, C++ for dummies. Again, link to the description, affiliate money. So we've obviously got the simple C out. That's basically like the method of printing out to your standard um, outputs library within C++ console applications. Um, and we've created a simple variable, an integer variable. 
nothing super out of the ordinary here. It's just like any other programming language. Obviously, very important to remember your semicolons. I forgot them on just about every line of this program. Um, so we're doing a couple of different C outs here um, down at the bottom. Um, now, here's where you immediately jump into pointers. And I wanted to immediately jump into pointers because they're immediately important within malware development. We've got our stack pointer. This is a pointer that is being created on the stack. It is not a heap pointer, it is a stack pointer. It is pointing to a variable that lies on the stack. Your standard way of creating variables is going to create those variables on the stack. Same thing for stack pointers. All pointers are is it's a variable that points to the memory location um, of a variable or of anything else. But in this case, we are creating a pointer. So that little star right there, the asterisk, is how you tell um, the, the compiler that you are creating a pointer. And we are creating to a, po a pointer to not just var1, to the location of var1. That is the ampersand symbol. The ampersand symbol says the location of this variable. So when we run this, we will actually you know, see the address of the stack pointer and the value of the stack pointer. Right here, we have a dereference. All that's doing is saying, hey, I don't want the pointer. I want you to go into that memory location and I want you to give me the value that is stored there. Now, down here at the bottom, we have a heat pointer. A heat pointer uses the new keyword. That's the quickest way to spot a heat pointer. And we are creating a new integer within this line and creating a pointer to it within the same line using the new keyword. So we have the integer 420. Yes. And we are creating that new integer object or that new integer variable on the heap instead of on the stack. The stack, the reason why you would want to use a heap instead of a stack, at least from my kind of layman's understanding of it, is that stack, the, your, your stack is specific to a scope. So if you've got a function, each function is going to have its own stack within C and C++. Whenever you exit that function, the stack basically just, it, it doesn't disappear. All of the stuff is still technically there directly after you exit a function, but the stack pointer no longer points to it anymore. Your stack pointer is pointing to a different scope, to the caller scope or to some other function scope. So when you create variables on the stack, you run the risk of those variables being left, you know, basically in the stack and then the stack essentially abandoning that area of memory. And when you enter other scopes, those scopes aren't going to know necessarily that, um, you know, that, that stack is old, that stack is stale, and it may have been overwritten. So whatever you're, you know, you're running your program, basically other scopes, other functions or other programs or processes can overwrite that old stack, that old place in memory, because all it is is just a place in memory. It can overwrite that old place in memory and then it's gone. A heap is shared throughout an entire process. So it's not scope specific. You could have another function or another thread or something like that reference the exact same heap. And as long as it's within the same process, I believe heaps are process specific. So as long as it's in the same process, it's going to have the same heap. You don't run the risk of accidentally overriding that area of memory. Um, so here we've created a, a new variable that we can then reference within other threads or within other functions and not worry about it being overwritten. This one right here, we could create that variable at a certain memory address, but later on in another function or in another thread, we could accidentally overwrite it. And basically later on down the line, when we're trying to reference it later, it, it, it would be gone. It would be overwritten with either junk or with something that we don't intend. Um, I'm assuming there's probably some security related you know, kind of insinuations there, some, some context where that would um, create some issues within a, a security context. Um, so then we've got functions. I mean, functions are the exact same thing as you would see them in, you know, any, any other programming language. One of the things that I like about C++ is the way that you can kind of arrange your program. Um, now here we've got a, a function that is within the same file. So one of the things that I like about C, C++ is the way that you can kind of arrange your programs. It's like, I don't know, it, to me, it just makes sense. It's a really cool way of arranging things. And once we get into object-oriented programming, it will make even more sense. Um, but in this context, we can store our functions within the same file, or we can store them within other files. 
And if we want to store them within other files, those other files don't have to be separate classes. They're just other files. Because essentially what will happen later is a program called a linker or a script called a linker will just take all of this and put it in a flat file anyways. So basically all you're really having to do is make sure that each individual file knows about the other one. So I'll explain that here in a second. But let's show a, a normal function within C, C++ that is within the same file. So this one right here, we have our init number and we're going to print out our initial number and then um, we're going to create a new one after that. And this new number function right here is just going to basically increment the original number that we passed to it. Um, so let's go ahead, and I, I just realized we haven't actually run this code yet. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. Um, it will build and will also show on the wrong screen. So we've got, let's relearn C, C++, the average of stack pointer. So as we can see up here, or the address of stack pointer, I think I said that right, um, is this address right here. And the value of stack pointer is 69. And then the address of the heap pointer, which we create right there is, or the address of that heap pointer is this other address. And if you kind of look at the two, you can tell that they're you know fairly far away from each other. Um, I'm not going to, actually do the math here, but it, it th those two addresses are fairly far away from each other in memory. So you can kind of tell that there is something else going on there, even if you didn't know that it was a stack versus a heap pointer. And then we print the value by dereferencing there. Um, so we've got all of that done. Oh, we didn't actually save this and then build it. So let's build, build and run. And it ends up on another screen. There we go. Um, so we've got 53 as the initial number, um, which you can see right here. Um, so 53 is the initial number, and then we create the new number by calling it function, which is in the same file, and the new number is the new number, which is 54. All it did was increment it. Super boring, very basic stuff. I know it's not as sexy as malware, but this is how I'm going to reteach myself um, this language. Now, one of the things that I don't know if I like or dislike is that just because of the way that C, C++ is compiled, you have to put your perimeter or your, your, your function definitions here at the top. And if you're doing it in a different file, you do it a different way. But if you have it in the same file and you want your function definitions or, or your actual functions themselves to be defined later on in the file instead of before main, then you have to at least give it like a basic definition of the function. So what kind of return type do you have? What kind of variables are you passing in? All of that kind of stuff. And obviously the name of the function itself. I kind of think I might like it because it allows you to keep main at the top and it also lets you have a quick reference to what the name of your functions are and like how you call them and things like that. Um, so I think I like it, but I'm not 100% sold on it either way. Now let's start talking about putting it, uh, putting functions in completely separate files and using linker to kind of throw it all together. So we've got this weird maths.cpp file right here. And that's just going to take like two, it, it just has two different functions that you know we don't need to worry too much about. It's um, our factorial function and a sum function. And both of these are actually recursive functions because I wanted to be a little bit fancy and see if I actually remembered um, recursive functions. Luckily enough, I do. Um, so we've got these two functions right here. I don't really know why I've got big constant in here. I think I was like playing around with something earlier. And then we've got a header file. And all this header file does, in my context at least, is it defines these functions. So basically what this allows us to do is we define our header file. And the header file, all it does is it says, hey, all these other functions are somewhere else. Don't worry about them. They're, they're, they're somewhere else. And then the linker later on will find those functions and put them all in that flat file, like I was saying, and you know everything will be, will be pretty again. So if we go back to our main function right here and we uncomment this, so, oop, that's wrong. So this returns some, um, this returns some function is in weirdmaths.cpp. Well, actually it's not. Okay, I defined it somewhere else. So let me go ahead and rewrite it. Doesn't, I mean, it's a simple function. Um, so, and return sum and 
we're going to return x plus y. So it literally is just an adding function, just for the sake of kind of demonstrating this. Um, so we've got return sum 8 and 10. We ought to print out 18, provided that I didn't screw something very obviously, very obvious up. And we've got 18. Um, so obviously we can also do our other one. So let's print out, I think it's sum of uh, 45. And this is going to be the mathematical, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, but basically you can see the implementation right here. It's a recursive sum that basically just adds, you know, if you've got like x equals 10, then it's going to add 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7. I can't remember the exact mathematical term that that is, but that's what it does. Then you've got factorial up here too. Um, so let's run that real quick. Let's go back to our main, make sure that I'm actually calling it correctly. And we should end up with a stupid big number. We've got 181,000 there. Uh, let's do a smaller one, just let's do five. So five plus four is nine, plus three is 12, plus two is 14. So we get 15 here, I believe, if my brain is working. Ooh, yikes. We did not get that. Oh no, we, we didn't end the line, so. I was like, how did I implement that that badly? Um, so now it should work. Let's try it again. Well, let's actually close out our window and try it again. And now we get 1850. Okay, so exactly what we were expecting. And all that is is just demonstrating how we can have functions in, in other files. And later on, once we build more complex programs, that's going to be vital because we don't want to just have one flat text file that has all of our functions in it even though that's how it ends up looking after you get things like linked and compiled and all of that, um, we don't want that while we're coding it. So that's it. You've got separate files, you've got functions, you've got pointers, all of that fun stuff, keeping it very, very simple because it is C++ for dummies. Like I said, check out that book in the description. Um, if you buy it using my affiliate link, obviously I get a little kickback and that helps, but I, you know, mainly just if you want to follow along, there's the book for you. Take it easy and enjoy the rest of the series. Hopefully it will blossom back into what I wanted it to be originally anyways. Peace.